Hey guys, so what are my top programming picks for 2020? It comes down to what you want to do. So in short, if you're gonna do machine learning AI, I would go with Python. You wanna become a freelance web developer, I'd go PHP. You wanna do Android data development, I would go Kotlin, not Java, Kotlin. If you wanna work for very large organizations, Big, big banks or something. It's either going to be Java or C Sharp.net. If you want to do game development, that's a tough one for me. So, if you want to be a game developer, my first instinct would be to say C Sharp Unity or to maybe develop a game for a mobile platform. So, iOS, you go Swift. For Android, you go Kotlin. Another option may be Python. At the end of the day, when you're looking at all these language choices, the first thing you gotta consider is the type of work you want to do. So like I said, freelance, PHP, uh, AI, you're gonna get to, you're gonna, going to get into Python. You know, people who know my channel know that I'm being a little bit facetious here, if that's the right word. What I'm trying to say is that I believe that language is is secondary, is a secondary choice. What you want to first look at is A, what the job markets are like, and B, what type of coding, what type of programming you want to do. It may seem glamorous to want to maybe build a game engine, I don't know. But you may not like that kind of coding, or you may not like the web stack, or you may love the web stack. You know, that's why I teach in the studio web, my system, my own SaaS, that you learn your foundations and then you choose what you want to do, what you want to specialize in. It's very hard to choose what you like or what you want to do as a developer until you learn at least the basics of development, right? It's hard because you don't have the judgment at that point when you don't know anything about code. You don't have any judgment. Uh, it's hard for you to see what you can't see. So you got to develop those nerd eyes I talk about, develop those nerd eyes, and then you can start really looking at the landscape of your opportunities out there. And there's lots. That's the great thing about development. There's all kinds of different types of development that you can do depending on the type of person you are. So for example, if you're like a math detailed oriented person, then maybe machine learning, AI is, would be good for you. Maybe uh, getting into uh, very large organizations, working on some legacy apps written in Java or C Sharp.net, that might be for you if you're a detail oriented guy. On the other hand, if you're more of a hustler, you're, you're, you like to get a project done and get it out, and you want to do a, a mix of type of programming, a little back-end logic, but you want to do some front-end too because you like creating front-facing applications for people. Then freelancing, freelancing PHP, freelancing with Node.js and JavaScript, freelancing with Python, Django, that might be what you want to do. It's hard to say. As another option, you may just want to work on front end stuff, the visual component, the visual part of a website or web app. In that case, you probably want to go with React, React Native, not React Native, React, or uh, Vue.js. Uh, these are very popular JavaScript frameworks that uh, you use to build these things. Of course, to do that, you should learn your HTML5, your CSS3, you should learn your JavaScript. So at the end of the day, what language you choose, you know, as I suggest, do your foundations first, then you can eye what you want to do, choose, you know, what specialization you want to get into based on your own personal uh, likes and dislikes and on the market opportunities where you happen to live. That's a big part of it all. At the end of the day, there's no one language or there's no one stack that's supremely uh, competitive versus others. In all cases, everything is circumstantial. If you look at the list of the top 10 languages, the top most in demand languages, a lot of that 
is uh, regional. A lot of it depends on where you live, and so you have to pay attention to that as well. And even if a particular technology may not be in the top 10 or the top 20, there still could be a heck of a lot of demand for it, and thus a lot of money. So you got to look at those type of lists with a little bit of a grain of salt, a grain of salt, because, you know, uh, one size does not fit all, you know, as they say. Anyway, I hope that helps. Um, if you don't know my channel, I've been writing code since 1994. I've been an entrepreneur longer than that. So when I teach code and I teach the business end of things, I am trying to bring my uh, more than two and a half decades of experience in the software development field. So instead of teaching you eh, how to do this in React or how to do this in Node or how to do this with Vue, which is cool, there's plenty of that on YouTube. So I figure, why should I do that? I'm going to bring what I can bring. Anyway, I'm sitting here in my car waiting for a meeting to show up. Uh, well, somebody is supposed to show up for a meeting here. I like to have my meetings uh, outside of the office just to get me into a new environment. That's one of the advantages of owning the business. You can decide where you're going to have the meetings with the, uh, with the employees. All right. We'll talk soon. Just a quick note, my new channel, my new YouTube channel, which is dedicated to freelancing, business development, web marketing, all these type of things that I touch on on this channel, I'm now going to be throwing it to the new channel, link below. And uh, yeah, I already got three videos up on that channel and I'll have many more. That channel, of course, is dedicated to the business end of coding and just business in general, freelancing. So if you're thinking of getting into freelancing, starting your own business, starting a SaaS, that's the channel you wanna watch. All right, we'll talk soon.